So now we're talking section 1.5. We're going to do this extra page about the multiplication rule for multiple independent events. So if we have the probability for the intersection of events, now let's make sure we add in this word. This is only true if it's independent. Otherwise, we have to worry about conditional probabilities. So if we have independent events, A1 through N, so we have a lot of independent events, and we want to find the probability of the intersection. <coughs> the intersection, again, being an and, so we want the probability of A1 and A2 and A3 all the way up to A to N. Well, all you have to do if they are independent is just multiply each probability. Makes it really easy. So let's try this. We have a license plate has six symbols. The first three symbols are letters from the English alphabet. The second three symbols are numbers 0 through 9. A symbol can be repeated. Now, because it can be repeated, that means that the f if I get an A the first time, that doesn't affect what I can get the next time. So these are independent. What is the probability of having license plate that says gen 1, 2, 3? So if I want a gen, I have a 1 out of 26 chance of getting a J. Then I want an E. Now it doesn't matter what I got the first time because they can be repeated, so I still have a 1 out of 26 chance of getting an E. And again, because you can repeat letters, I have a 1 out of 26 chance of getting an N. Now I want a number 1, but we only have the number 0 through 9, that's 10 options, so we have 1 out of 10. For the 2, we have a 1 out of 10. For the 3, we have a 1 out of 10. And this would give me 5.68 times 10 to the negative 8th power. For our next example, suppose I have a 0.8 probability of correctly answering any multiple choice questions on a quiz. And there are three questions. Notice it's a 0.8 probability for any of them. So what I get on the first one shouldn't be affecting the next one. So they should be independent. or they don't affect each other. And because it's multiple choice, one question should not affect the next question. So what's the probability that I get all the questions correct? So I want the first one to be correct. Okay. Or I always like to write out what I'm trying to get. So I need to get the first one correct, and the second one correct, and the third one correct. Okay. So to get the first one correct, I'd have a 0.8 chance. The next one will also be 0.8, and the next one will also be 0.8. Because I'm looking for the probability of ands, I multiply them, so I get 0.512. Okay. Next, what is the probability that I get all the questions wrong? So this would be the probability, let's do a W for wrong. So wrong, and wrong, and wrong. What's the probability of getting one wrong? If we have a 0.8 chance, to get it right, 1 minus 0 0.8 gives me 0.2. So we'd have 0.2 for the first one, 0.2 for the second one, and 0.2 for the third one, which gives me 0 0.008. And what is the probability of my answers being correct, wrong, and correct in that order? So I'm looking specifically for correct, and wrong, and then correct. So correct is 0.8 with an and we times, now wrong is only 0.2 and correct is 0.8. This gives me 0.128. Now our next one is what is the probability that I answer at least one question correctly? Whenever you see this at least one, again remember we need to use the complement. And in our case, the complement of at least one question is that they are all wrong. So the complement of at least one right is that they are all wrong. So the probability of at least one correct equals one minus the probability that they are all wrong. Or one minus the probability of wrong, and wrong, and wrong, which we found of above is 0 0.008. So 1 minus 0 0.008 should give me 0 0.992. 
An example 36. The probability that a person has a positive test result is 0.02. Assume that the results are for different people are independent. So they, again, they should not affect each other. So if one person takes the test, what is the probability of a negative result? So the probability of a positive equals 0.02. So then the probability of a negative would be 0.98. Now if five people take the test, what is the probability that they all have positive test results? So we are looking for the probability of a plus and a positive and a positive and a positive and a positive. Now anytime you're looking for the probability of an and, we multiply. So each positive has a probability 0.02. So 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.02. Or I could do a shortcut of 0.02 to the fifth power, since I know I have to multiply them five times. And I get 0 0.00000032. 000 or 3.2 times 10 to the negative 9. Now number 3, if 5 people take the test, what are, what's the probability that the results are in order? Positive, positive, negative, positive, and negative. So we need a positive, and a positive, and a negative, and a positive, and a negative. So a positive is 0 0.02, the next positive is still 0 0.02, then a negative is 0 0.98, a positive is 0 0.02, and a negative is 0 0.98. This should give me 3.76 times 10 to the negative 4. Let's see, and number four, if 50 people take the test, what is the probability that all the results are negative? So we want the probability of 50 negatives. Or the probability of a negative and a negative and dot, 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 and a negative. And we're going to have to do that 50 times. Well, just like, what did we do up above when we wanted five positives. We did the probability of the positives one, two, three, four, five times and did point to the power of five. So if we want the probability of these negatives, so for these negatives, it would be a point nine eight times point nine eight, and I would have to do that fifty times. So point nine eight to the power of fifty is going to be point 3641. And if 50 people take the test, what is the probability of at least one positive? So again, anytime you see that at least one, we need to use the complement rule. Or the probability of at least one is always equal to one minus the probability of none, or in this case, none positives. And to get no positives, that would be the same thing as 50 negatives. So we're going to have 1 minus what we just barely found, so 0 0.3641, which gives me 0 0.6359.